Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another AP CSA lesson where I, Goldie, take you through um, today's lesson in Unit 4 iteration. It's the first lesson where we're going to talk about while loops and what they are, how we make them, um, and trace through some of them. So let's first talk about what a loop is, because we haven't encountered a loop yet in this course. So a loop, or what's sometimes referred to as the iteration, pr iteration process, um, is when you repeat the same set of instructions or the same set of statements um, over and over again while a condition evaluates to true. There are three loops that Java has, the while, the for, and the do while. Um, in this course, in Computer Science A, we are going to cover the while loop and the for loop. The do while is not covered on the AP exam, so we're not going to talk about it right now. The syntax for each of these will vary a little bit, um, but they essentially do the same thing. They repeat a set of statements um, however many times you need it to repeat. So let's specifically look at the while loop today. <laughs> so the while loop will keep executing its block of statements while some condition evaluates to true. And here's kind of the syntax for it. Um, it starts off with the, with the keyword while, and then in parentheses, there's going to be a condition of some kind. The condition evaluates to true or false. It's a Boolean statement. So while the condition is true, then you're going to execute anything in the while block, everything in the while block. Um, and then after all of those statements are uh, executed, and once the end of that block is reached, the program loops back around and checks the condition again. <clears throat> if the condition is still true, the code segment is going to execute again, and the process repeats. Okay? So while that condition is true, all of those statements get executed. You jump back up, check the condition again. If it's still true, you're going to execute those same statements again. And you see you're left in this loop of code until the condition is false. If the condition is false, the while loop ends and the loop is not executed again. And that's the while loop. So we're going to do a lot of practice problems, a lot of tracing problems to kind of get used to the while loop and how it works. So we're going to start off with um, a couple of basic examples here. What is printed after the following code is executed? So we're just going to trace through and see what's printed. So in this example, x starts off as 1. OK, perfect. And then we have the while loop. So you can see in parentheses there, there's a condition that's going to evaluate to true or false. So x right now is 1. So it's asking the question. It's saying while x is less than or equal to 5. So we have to ask the question, is x less than or equal to 5? Well, 1 is less than or equal to 5. That is true. And because it's true, the while loop is then entered. Okay. It prints off the value of x, which is currently 1. And then the next statement, x increases by 1. So x becomes 2. <coughs> now that's the bottom of our while loop. So from there, we loop back around and we check the condition again. Okay. Is 2 less than or equal to 5? That is, it's still a true statement. So we're going to repeat that process again. This time, as we repeat, x is now 2. So we print off a 2, and then x increases by 1. And we loop back around. Is 3 less than or equal to 5? That is true. Print off with a value of x, which is currently 3. x increases by 4. So you can see we're repeating the same set of instructions over and over again, but the value of x is changing each time. So it kind of does something a little bit different each time we go through. So now we check x has the value of 4. Is 4 less than or equal to 5? That is still true. So we're going to print off the value of 4. x increases to 5. Is 5 less than or equal to 5? That is still true. Print off a of 5. x increases to 6. Come back up. Is 6 less than or equal to 5? Finally, we have a false statement. That is false. So as soon as you go back to check and you get that false statement, the loop body will no longer execute. Okay? It doesn't execute one more time with the false statement. It stops as soon as that statement um, is false. And I should be careful. It stops as soon as it's false when you go back up to check it. Right? If x changed here and x became like 6 right here, the rest of the loop would still execute. 
Okay, the whole, all of the statements need to execute before you go back up and check it again. Okay, so the loop doesn't end the second that x becomes greater than five. Okay, that's not what's happening. What's happening is the loop is exited once you go and check the condition and it's false. Okay, we only check the condition when we loop back around after we have executed those statements. Okay. So that's something that students have to get a little used to, starting the while loop, eventually that'll feel pretty natural, okay? When this loop ends, the x value is six. So the rest of your code runs, x is still going to be six as the rest of your code runs, okay? So it doesn't go back to being one or whatever that might be. Um, it keeps running with x's new changes, okay? What got printed to the screen? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see another example here. Okay, for this one, um, y is three, z, z is zero. Okay. We have a condition to check, is y less than six? And it is, okay. y is less than six. y right now is three. Three is less than six, that is true. So we're gonna enter our loop, okay. We take the current value of y, which is three, times it by two, and add it to the value of z. So three times two is six, plus z, which is currently zero, and we get six as our new value of z. And then y increases by one. So nothing gets printed to the council, it's just those two statements run. And then once the bottom is reached, we loop back around and check our value of y, okay? Is y less than six? Four is less than six, that's true. So we go back in. Now we have y, which is four. Four times two is eight. And then we add it to the six that z already is, six plus eight is gonna be 14. 14 is the value of z, y increases by one, and I come back up and check my condition. Five is less than six, that's true, so I'm gonna go through this again. <laughs> Five times two is 10, 10 plus 14 is gonna be 24, that's the new value of z. And then y increases by one, so y is six, and I come back to check my condition. Loops are fun. You got to do the same thing over and over again. <laughs> is six less than six? No, that is false. Six is not less than six. Okay, remember that is a false statement. Because that's a false statement, the loop ends and we continue with the code right after the loop body, okay, which prints off the value of z, which right now is 24. Okay. Okay. Soon as that condition is false, we move on. All right, I got two more examples here, okay? Each getting a little more fun as we go along. If at any point you wanna pause the video and try these on your own, feel free, and you can kinda of jump ahead and see if you got the correct answer, but I'm gonna trace through them like I've been doing, so um, you can get some help if you need it. <coughs> so we're gonna start off with num1, num2, 10 and 20. Now our condition is going to be um, used with a Boolean operator. We have the and. Okay, so I'm checking two conditions. I'm checking if num1 is greater than or equal to five and num2 is greater than or equal to negative two. And remember with the and, both of these have to be true in order for the whole statement to be true. Okay. So as long as both conditions are true, the whole expression is true and my loop keeps running. Okay. So right now 10 greater than or equal to five, that's true. 20 greater than or equal to negative two, that is also true, okay? Both those conditions are true, so my loop is gonna be entered. And I'm gonna print off the value of num1 with a space and then the value of num2. And then num1 and num2 get changed, okay? Num1 gets changed because we have 20 divided by 10 plus seven, okay? 20 divided by 10 is two plus seven is nine. And notice how it doesn't add to the value of num1, it just is changed, num1 is just changed. So num1 becomes nine. <coughs> the next one, we get 20 minus nine minus three. Okay, 20 minus nine is 11, and then minus three is eight. <coughs> Sorry, and again, we're not adding it to the value of num2, we are just changing num2 because we have the assignment statement only. And then we loop back up with nine and eight. 9 is greater than or equal to 5, and 8 is greater than or equal to negative 2. 
both conditions are true, let's run this again. Print off the values 9 and 8, and then we're going to change these values. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Num2 is 8, 9 plus 7. 8 divided by 9 is 0, because integer division, so num1 is just 7. Okay. Num2 minus num1, so num2 would be 8 minus 7 minus 3. <clears throat> 8 minus 7 is 1, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. We'll go back up, check. Yes, 7 is greater than or equal to 5, and negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Both are true. We'll print them off. We'll change it again. Okay, we have um, negative 2 divided by 7, that's still 0, okay, um, and then plus 7, so that still gets us a 7, and then I have um, negative 2 minus 7 minus 3, <coughs> which comes out to be, um, oh, excuse me, that should be negative 12, right? Oof. Negative 12, but either way, okay. When we go back up, whether it's negative 14 or negative 12, um, we have a false statement now. Okay. Why do we have a false statement? Well, the first one, num1, 7 is still greater than or equal to 5. But the second statement, num2, negative 12, is not greater than or equal to negative 2. So the loop has ended. Okay. And that's what's printed to our council. Okay, last one, last example, and we'll move on to a couple of other things here. Last example, so we got a Boolean value, my boo equals true, and a counter that's equal to zero. Okay. Those two are created, and then I just have while my boo. Okay. So in the parentheses is a condition, and remember the condition is a Boolean question, right? Is this true or false? So you can also have a Boolean variable in parentheses there. So it says while my boo, which means that while true, my boo is currently true. So while true, run the statements. Okay. So my boo is true, the condition is true, and my loop is entered. Counter increases by one. And then inside this while loop, I have an if statement. Okay. If counter mod four is equal to zero, one mod four is one. So my if statement is false, and my boo never gets changed. So I go back up. My boo is still true. Counter is 2. 2 mod 4 is 2. So my boo never changes. Still true. Counter is 3. 3 mod 4 is 3. My boo is not changed. My boo is still true. Counter becomes 4. 4 mod 4. Okay. 4 mod 4 is now 0. So now my boo gets changed to false. And now when you go back up, my boo has become false. So the condition is false. And that means that the loop has ended. And what gets printed is the value of counter. OK, so those were some basic while loops, a few different ways of things you can see with the while loop. Let's talk about some. Um, uh, Peculiar, peculiar qualities of a while loop. Um, first, an infinite loop. Okay, why is the code below very appropriate for the song? Okay, so you see x is equal to one, right here. So x has the value of one. While x is less than ten, you're gonna print four lines. This is the song that never ends. It goes on and on, my friends. <laughs> Some people started singing it not knowing what it was, and they'll continue singing it forever just because condition is checked again, and the four lines are printed again. I won't sing it for you again, because I know that was a little tough to hear me sing. But why is it appropriate? Well, the while loop will always evaluate to true, and it'll never end. Okay? There's no ending to this. X is always 1, 1 is always less than 10, and we have no way of getting out of the loop. Okay. That's what's called an infinite loop. Okay. Now what happens when we have an infinite loop? Well, you don't like them. Okay. You don't like infinite loops. Make sure your loop stops. Infinite loops occur like we just saw when our condition is always going to be true, and the loop will never exit. Okay. It'll just keep going. 
And maybe you want to sing that song forever and ever, but most people don't. <laughs> what ends up happening on your computer, it will cause a runtime error and cause your program to crash. Okay. Now, if you're running your program from like the console on your computer, your program will, will crash your computer. You'll have to restart it. But if you're running it from like a replit or um, code rooms or anything that's web-based, they have some safeguards in place so that if they do have an infinite loop, they have like a timeout setting so that you actually don't crash your browser. It used to crash your browser, but usually they don't crash your browser anymore. Don't try it. <laughs> but it might crash your computer if you're um, just using the straight command window. We don't like infinite loops. Okay? It's a runtime error when you have an infinite loop. Your compiler will not catch an infinite loop. We also want to make sure that we are actually entering loops. Okay? There might be some programs where um, you maybe don't want a while loop to run. Um, if a condition isn't true, that's kind of up to you as the programmer. <coughs> but logically, um, if you want the while loop to be entered, always make sure that it's actually true. So here's an example. X is 10. While 10, it, while X is greater than 0 and X is less than 5. Okay, which is an okay statement, but it's not true right now. 10. 10 is not less than 5. So the while loop is false. And these actually never get printed off. <coughs> Excuse me. They never run. So look for that too when you are um, when you are creating your loops. Make sure it's actually true and that you can enter it to begin with. Okay, let's talk about scope of variables. Okay. Um, Java is called a very efficient programming language um, because as your program is running, it saves memory automatically. And one of the ways it saves memory is by what's called garbage collection. And it basically gets rid of variables and variable values that are no longer needed. When you declare a variable inside of a loop or inside of an if statement, <coughs> its scope, what we call its scope, is that loop or if statement. Meaning that it that variable won't exist outside of the loop or the if, if statement. It's, it'll be garbage collected once the block is done and it'll no longer exist. So you can't use it. And if you try to use it, you're going to get an error. Okay. Here's an example. Okay. I say, why does it cause an error? It's due to the scope. So x is 0. Okay. While x is greater than negative 1, which it is, notice I have a declaration. I say c equals 0. Okay. So I'm going to have a c. It's going to be 0. I'm going to ask the user to enter in an integer. I'm going to store that in x. So let's say enter 5, right? I'm going to report to the user, you entered 5. And then c increases by 1. I go up and check the condition. 5 is greater than negative 1. Perfect, okay? Int c equals 0, okay? I'm declaring it again because um, at the end of the loop, it was garbage collected. So C is 0, and then I go through the whole process again. And then when I get out of my loop, okay, right now this is fine. Okay, You can declare variables like this inside of your while loop. It obviously is not working like you intend it to work. You want this to kind of be a counter for how many numbers the user enters. So it's not working like you want to work, but the syntax is fine, and it compiles and runs fine. <coughs> the problem, the error, is actually right here you declared C inside of your while loop, which means it only is going to exist inside the while loop. As soon as your while loop is exited, C is gone. Okay. So when you try to use C, you're going to get an error. Okay. The program will no longer have a variable called C, and you are going to get an error. <coughs> Sometimes your compiler can catch these and sometimes they don't. I found it just depends on the situation. So be aware of it. It's easy enough to rewrite the code so you don't run into that problem though. Okay? You just don't declare any variables inside the while loop or inside of an if statement. So instead, declare it on the outside here. <laughs> and then it's not running. Um, it's not turning to zero every time you run the while loop. So that fixes that problem. But then it also um, is just declared once, and then you're able to use it on the outside, no problem. Sorry. If you need time, 
writing that down, feel free to pause it. But the fix for scope is just to move it outside. Um, outside. If you did want it to always be zero for some reason too, um, remember you can just declare it in C and then have C equals zero right in here. Okay, let's say you did want it to restart to C equals zero every time for whatever reason, I don't know. You can still declare on the outside. You don't, know, you don't necessarily have to assign it anything. Just make sure the declaration happens outside of the while loop. Okay. All right, while loop examples. So we're gonna finish this section of notes. I have three tracing problems like this where we determine what's printed to the screen. I have one AP multiple choice example and then I have one free response example. Okay. So if you wanted to pause the video and try these on your own, feel free to do that. Come back and check the answers. But I'm gonna go through it and trace through it like we've been doing. Okay. So this one num is the 21 and I jump right into my condition. 21 less than or equal to 25 is true. 21 not equal to 24, that's also true. I increase it, check the condition. Less than or equal to 25, not equal to 24, increase to 23, still true, increases to 24. Is this condition true? 24 is less than or equal to 25, and, but 24 is not equal to 24, that's false. So your while loop is false, and you print off the last value of num, which is going to be 24. Okay. On the AP exam, they usually won't do very lengthy traces. Like they'll keep it about like this, right? This is a very easy example, but they'll keep your the amount of times you have to trace through um, pretty small because they don't want you wasting time. So I don't want you to expect to have to trace through a while loop like for 20 loops. That would be crazy, too time consuming to do by hand. This is reasonable enough to do by hand. If your while loop is gonna repeat many times, it's usually because there's a pattern that they want you to see and a pattern they want you to evaluate instead of having to trace everything through by hand. And what I mean by that, we'll actually see in one of the examples coming up about finding a pattern and not having to trace through everything by hand. Let's look at this example. We can see a little bit more happening inside the while loop. I see an if and an else statement in there. So let's start off, num is 10, sum is zero, perfect. Check my condition, 10 mod two is equal to zero, that's true. I'm gonna add num to sum, 10 plus zero is 10. I'm gonna check my condition, is sum greater than 50? Right now sum is 10. It is not greater than 50, that's false, so my else statement is the one that runs. I add two to num. I go back up and I check. Okay. Yes, it's still true. Sum, I add it to, I get 22. Is sum greater than 50? No. So I add two to num. Okay. Now the pattern you can start to see, when is the loop going to end? The loop is going to end when num becomes an odd number. Okay. When does num become an odd number? Num becomes odd when you add one to it, and that's only gonna happen when sum is greater than 50. Okay. So you can see the end, it is going to end. It's just, what are the values of num and sum after, after it ends? We're gonna keep tracing through and seeing. Okay. 14 plus 22 is 36, still not greater than 50, so it increases to 16. Still an even number, 16 plus 36, is 52, okay, 52. Now 52 is greater than 50, that's true. Now num is gonna become odd, and when I go back up to check, num mod two is gonna be false, and I can print the value of sum at the end, okay. So you can start to recognize patterns, <clears throat> and you can start to see, um, see what happens when we get close to the end there. Okay, here's the last tracing example here. Okay, and this is another one I want you to really try to focus on what's the pattern with this while loop so that I don't have to go through all of that tracing. So num, <coughs> three variables. Num is one, three, four, four, seven, five. Digit sum is zero and R is just declared. While num is not equal to zero, and it's not, you're gonna do three things. You're gonna take 
the value of r, you're going to take num mod 10. And num mod 10 gets you that last digit. Okay, And then you're, that's going to become your value of r. Sorry. You're going to take num and you're going to divide it by 10. Integer division chops off that last um, that last piece when you divide it by um, when you divide it by ten, so num becomes one three four seven, and your digit sum gets the value of r added to it. Okay, so those three things happen. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, digit sum should give you a little bit of an idea of what we're doing with this code segment. Let's do it one more time and see if you can see the pattern. Num is not equal to zero, so r I take num mod 10, so that's going to give me 7, and that's going to be the value of r. Okay. I'm going to take num, ooh, I put a little note, can you see the algorithm? If you can, what is the end result print? If you can't yet at this point, keep tracing, okay? Don't feel like you have to stop at a certain point because you're supposed to see the algorithm. Okay. But if you're seeing what's happening, every time we loop, we take the digit and we add it to digit sum. R becomes the last digit, the ones digit of num every time we loop, and every time we're going to add it to digit sum. So that means we take the 7 plus our 5 already, plus 4, 3, 1, we're going to add up all the digits and get the sum, and by the time we end, that's what's going to be printed to the screen. So if you can see that pattern early on in your tracing, that's awesome. Now I didn't have to trace through everything to get my answer. Okay. If you needed to trace through it a little bit more to see that pattern, don't feel bad. Keep tracing through. Um, and maybe you couldn't see the pattern until the very end. And that's fine as well. You are just learning about these while loops now. <laughs> so give yourself a little bit of grace if you can't see patterns yet. But eventually you want to get to the point where you can see the patterns. Okay. And that's going to be the goal. Two problems left. This next one is a uh, what would be a multiple choice example. Okay, this isn't from an AP exam necessarily, but this is kind of inspired by some of the questions they would ask on the AP exam. So they say consider the following code segment. They have a var variable equals 11, and then they have here a comment said missing while loop header. So this is very common. They want you to basically fill in what should be the loop header to have some sort of um, predicted output. So you can see inside we subtract one from var right away and then we print it off. Okay. So which of the following, so the choices are over there to the right, can be used as a replacement so that the code segment prints off 10, 9, 8, 7. Okay. So var starts off as 11. We subtract one right away and then 10 gets printed. Okay. So the first number printed is 10. And then we loop back up, check the condition. As long as the condition is true, we subtract one, print it off, <coughs> and we keep going. Okay, keep going. So then we subtract one, print it off, subtract one, print it off, and then we want the loop to stop. Okay, so what we see is we want var to be eight. Okay, we want this loop header to accept var being 8, then we subtract it to get 7, we print off a 7, and then we don't want the loop header to accept a 7. So we want var to be 8, we don't want it to be 7, and that's the cutoff that you have to see in order to choose which answer is correct over there. Which of the headers will allow var to be 8 but not be 7? Okay. A does not let var be 8. Okay. B does, C does, um, this does, and this does. Okay. Eight, var can be eight in all of them. But which of them will not allow it to be seven? Okay. Which of them will not allow it to be seven? And the answer is going to be C right there. And also while I'm looking at it, E is also a choice as well. Okay. Sorry, that was my mistake. I made the question. 
<laughs> but e will allow var to be 8, and then as soon as var is 7, it becomes false. This is what happens when you write your own questions. So C or E. On the AP exam, there's only going to be one correct choice, but I guess I made two correct choices here. There you go. Okay. Good. Last example. Last example here. Free response. Okay. It says loop and value are two integers. Um, loop is a positive number, and value is some number between 1 and 9. It wants you to write a while loop below that will iterate loop lines of code. So we don't know what value loop is. It's some value um, of random numbers between 1 and 9, inclusive, so including 1 and 9. And the line of random numbers will end once the um, random number is equal to whatever value is. Okay. Which means, here's an example. Okay. If loop is 4 and value is 8, okay. loop is 4, value is 8. You start off printing random numbers on the same line and you go until you reach that value and then you move on to the next line. Print random values until you reach value, next line until you reach 8, and then next line and you reach 8. Now how many times, how many lines did you print? You printed four times because that was your loop. Okay. Now the code probably isn't obvious to you. Okay, and that's fine. We're, again, we're just learning about loops. We're just kind of getting into writing our own code to accomplish a specific task. So if the code doesn't come to you right away, write out some pseudocode. Okay, and that's what we're going to do to kind of solve this first. So while the loop is for, we're going to work specifically off of this example here. Okay, the while the loop is for. Okay, so while the loop is still going to be for, we want to generate a random number. We want to print that random number to the screen. So like the first time through, I generated a five and then I printed a five. And then what do I want to do? I want to check if that random number is equal to the value I'm searching for. Okay. So if that random number is equal to the value I'm searching for, in this case value was eight, I want to move to a new line, right? As soon as value was eight, I moved to a new line. I also, the loop ended up decreasing, okay? So loop is four. As soon as an eight was printed, I knew I had three lines of code left, or three lines of random numbers left. So my loop decreased by one, okay? Oh, sorry, I forgot that was. Otherwise, that's it, I repeat this. If this isn't true, I want to repeat this. So I don't have to have an else statement here. I just wanna check. If it's true, those are the two things that I want to happen. If it's not, you just keep generating a random number and printing that random number. Okay. So from the pseudocode, we can get our actual code now that we have what's happening on each line. So while the loop is to four, so four is very specific to our example. We want to make a general. So while loop, um, you could put greater than or equal to one. Right? So if loop starts off as 4, then it becomes 3, 2, 1. That would give you four lines of code. You could also, and this is kind of what happened in our multiple choice example, you could also have loop greater than 0, okay? Because loop is going to be an a integer value, okay? So again, if loop starts out at 4, you run the fourth line, third line, second line, first line. So four lines of code. So you could do either. So that's your while loop, that's your condition. Generate a random number, we know how to do that. Print it, have an if statement, and then have these two lines of code inside that if statement. Here's what that looks like. Okay. I used while loop is greater than or equal to one. Generate a random number. So there's a line of code to generate that random number. Print off that random number. Okay, And I specifically used print because they're continuing all on the same line. If value was equal to random number, so, whatever, the, again, you're making a general code here. In our example, value is 8, but we don't want to hard code that into our, um, into our program here. We want the generic if value is equal to that random number. I want my loop. Loop was my variable here, right, what they gave me. Loop to decrease by 1 and print a new line, or vice versa. You could have them in any order inside that if statement. Look good. 
If you're working on writing your code, the pseudocode really helps out um, to figure out what you need line by line. And um, they wouldn't accept that on the AP exam necessarily, pseudocode for any sort of credit. But while you're working on having some of this code become more familiar to you, the pseudocode is a great stepping point. Okay. Highly recommend it. Okay, yeah, and then that is the end of our lesson one, while loops. Um, so I hope you guys learned a ton on this. We'll keep going with loops the rest of this unit. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.